Hey everybody, I'm Jake. I'm an indie game developer and I'm currently working on my dream game, Jumbo and Chuck. Now this devlog is probably gonna be a little shorter than most, simply because, I don't know if you can tell, for those of you that watch my videos, I'm in a different location. Um, the moving everything was kind of a hassle. So yeah, I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bad. <laughs> I tried working with it today. I don't think the lights that I have are powerful enough to fill the space of this room in comparison to the smaller room I used to be in. So I'm, I'm working on it and hopefully in the future, uh, these the lighting in the, the videos will be better. Okay, so after the last video came out, uh, when I was actually watching it, I noticed a lot of the animations were looking pretty bad. So I decided to take the time and go back through them. So the most notable change to any of the animations was just the basic running animation. Instead of Jumbo walking with his feet, you know, perfectly shoulder width apart all the time, humans actually walk with their feet kind of going one in front of the other. So I just added that in. Um, you have to add in a little bit of hip rotation, and then I brought in the arms so they're not just out here doing whatever the heck they were doing before. <laughs> brought them in a little bit, added some shoulder rotation, and we have a pretty decent running animation now. Now the ground pound is actually a very useful move for 3D platformers. Not only can it be used as a way to attack, but it can also be used like it is in Banjo and Donkey Kong 64 to press down switches. Now to make my ground pound somewhat unique, I wanted to kind of go with the theme of Jumbo being a whale. And I don't know if you guys have seen any of those cartoons where you see whales falling from the sky, but I really enjoyed that and I thought because he is a whale, it'd be really cool to add that in as his ground pound. So I went and created the animation for it. And I mean, the animation was okay, but I really what I disliked about the whole idea of it was uh, when he comes crashing down, because he's so outstretched because of the belly flop, he's actually widened the area of impact. And I was worried that later on in the game, maybe I was gonna have switches and they'd be closer together, and if you were to hit one, it might accidentally trigger both or something at the same time. So I wanted to reduce the impact zone, if you will. So instead of the belly flop, I thought, you know what, Jumbo has a giant head. Why don't we have it just come smash down like it's freaking Thor's hammer. So I went to create this and to emphasize just Jumbo's head, just crazy smashing down with a lot of force. Um, when Jumbo actually impacts the ground, I have a separate animation that plays that really just compresses his body and then spring back into life. And I think it adds a lot of character to the game and I really like it. If you've played games like Banjo or Donkey Kong 64, when the user goes to do a ground pound, it doesn't matter what their velocity was, it always stops them directly where they were and brings them down. And the reason that it does this, when the user presses for the ground pound, he wants to go straight down. So to do this, and this is great because a lot of you guys ask me why I don't use rigid bodies. Why I don't use rigid bodies. This is why I don't want to use rigid bodies. Because it's super easy to cancel all of the velocity and manipulate the velocity whenever I want. So with this, when the user presses for a ground pound, it actually cancels all of the velocity. And then I have this little pause for the animation. And so this pause is then reactivated with an animation event um, where I just send all the force downward. So from there, it was just really down to adding in a particle effect to really sell this new move. So for this particle effect, I wanted Jumbo to come and when he hits the ground, kind of like an explosion outward of uh, dust. And so I went to create this and I just used a circle emitter, goes out and then dissipates with a little bit of a curvature and whatnot and some randomization to where they are and what size they are in their rotation. Pretty simple, but I think it sells the effect really well. So normally to keep myself organized, I write down everything in a notebook, but I end up making such a mess and I fill every single page and I end up having to like flip through a bunch of pages and everything. And I found that my organization was lacking. So I finally cracked and just Basically, like every devlogger on YouTube, I 
started using Trello. So if you guys haven't been using Trello, I would definitely recommend checking it out because it's free. And you wanna know what else is free? Hitting that like button. And while you're there, please consider subscribing and maybe even leaving a comment. It'll really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so here we are in the game and I just wanted to showcase this, uh, the ground pound in action and a few things that you can do with it. So the regular ground pound, if you were to jump and then press the crouch button, or I guess left trigger in this instance, he would do a ground pound, which is really nice, but you can actually do it out of basically every airborne move. So if we were to come here and do a double jump, you can combo into it <laughs> just like that. And it looks like that. And also, um, if you were to do a backflip, you can combo into the ground pound as well. And it's pretty nice. And it's really cool because I spent a lot of time on this where if you were to, you know, cause it's all in the same button, right? If you were to hold this and then press A, you have to be in the air. And even if you were holding on, it doesn't just automatically instantiate it. You do have to let go in the air and then press it again. So it would look something like that. And same thing with that, you just have to tap it. If you were to hold it, um, you would just go into a crouch after his ground pound. I, the, I believe the animation for that could be a little bit better. Maybe a transition from the ground pound into a crouch directly instead of into the locomotion state and then into the crouch. But that's something that we can work on a little bit later. So yeah, it's just kind of cool, you know. It adds a little bit of fun to it. You can see his head squash in there. Now, right now, there's no damage at all that can happen in the game. So like there's no health or anything like that. But if you were to jump off of this later in the game and then do a ground pound, you know, I mean, it brings it down so fast, but I personally think that that would add, um, that would probably kill you is what I'm trying to get at. So yeah, that's everything I've been working on since the last devlog. I'm sorry, it's a little bit less content than I wanted to bring. I was actually working on another thing, but I didn't quite get it done, so I, I didn't mention it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, like I said before, give this video a like, subscribe, comment, it'll really help me out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.